Contemporary philosophers are enormously influential right now. Jay Shetty. Is philosophy still a thing? That would be like a philosopher, right? It's just as relevant today as it was centuries ago. I think it's just influencers that have words to say. You're not, you don't have to, I'm a philosopher. We're philosophers. 100%. Oh my God, I was philosophizing today when I said- We aren't podcasters, we're philosophers. That's what I was saying about the productivity, that's philosophy. Oh that's my philosophy. God. That is the definition we, of philosophy. Look, we could sit and stare at a wall all day and that would be the most productive day for a philosopher like ourselves. That's why we're in this library. Oh my God. Because it's I have, stimulating I the have, brain. Like I'm having an out-of-body nirvana experience right now realizing my calling today with this mic and my cell phone is that I was born to be a philosopher. Hey, Brooke. Hi, Connor. Are you ready to M-A-P? I'm ready to pee. Ignorance is bliss. I'm living in a world of my own, and it's awesome. Oh, I thought I was responsible for 9-11 when I was five. Where were you? In Pennsylvania. Touch grass, might I suggest. We're just going to dive right in today. Hey guys, welcome back to B-N-C-A-P. What is the thing? B-N-C-M-A-P. B and C, M A P. Uh, we're back at it again with the white fans, and uh, it feels good. It's been seven years since they made that damn Daniel video. Damn Daniel. Did you know it's been seven years? No. Which means it's been seven years since I interned at Vans because I was there when that happened, and we we flew them out. We flew Daniel and his friend out and awarded them with a, one of those giant checks. Okay, put a pin in that because I have. Two other things that are going to make you feel really old. Okay. So pin. Consider it, it in. Let's do these housekeeping items. Oh. And then come back to the pin. So housekeeping items at their core would be things that keep the house afloat. If it was mm-hmm. on a river or some other body of water. Mm-hmm. So we need to keep the house afloat by announcing that the TMG Fantasy Football Punishment live stream is going to be this Sunday. While lead lost because he's a big old huge loser right um and he's doing his fantasy football 12 hour live stream this sunday march 5th starting at 8 30 p.m we're going to join him at around 9 p.m with a little surprise a wee surprise uh, yeah say. i would tune in i would tune in if i were you yeah we'll be there we'll be on the live did we ever like really talk about how the fantasy ended like everybody's place and such no i know that you were second right you got you came in like second i think the whole thing with us was like we were just saying you lost no something horrible happened but really quickly it is going to be streaming on real tmg studios tiktok and youtube page separately go ahead and subscribe to close friends on tmg studios.tv we'd love to have you circling back to fantasy you beat me do you know that oh i was like about i was gonna win or come in second to zach probably but you had randomly come out. I of came the, in second. Rose from the ashes. Like a and phoenix. beat me. Because wow. of Joe B. Yeah, my my guy. Yeah. That's funny. It was like, I was hey, kind of sad for me. Like genuinely, because of fantasy and just my hometown pride recently, I've been feeling the loss of games, which I've never felt. Like I felt sad about the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I felt sad when I... When you beat me in fantasy, which is new. Those are new feelings. Feeling sad? Yeah. Feelings I feel like around sports. You feel sad. No, no, no. Fun. Sad, I feel sad all the time, but yeah. feelings to arise from a sporting event. That's yeah. new for me. Well, cool. It's so important to uh, never let your age stop you from trying new things. Speaking of age, are you ready for two things that are, that are going to make you feel really old? Sure. Okay. The first thing is the new American Girl doll. They're making a new historical, historic, historic era for the new American Girl doll, 1999. Weren't the 90s just yesterday as 90s. if. 90s. Historical era. Yeah, that's freaky. Like that is freaky when you think about these girls compared to, let's say, well, I don't Samantha. Remember, you know what? I, or, don't, I don't remember 1999. That is historical for me. I don't remember now. It's of 1999. I don't remember 2006. Sure. They, they could say historical and they, it could be someone. What happened in 2006? See, like, I don't even know what happened. 
I don't know anything. Right. But the fact that you were born in that era and it's now a historical era should make you feel bad. It's not history as in like, see, like I don't even know what happened in history. I guess yesterday is history if you think about it. The Yeah. And don't look back because you're not going that way. And the rest is her still unwritten and written and written. Happy Women's History Month. Oh my God. Thank you. Connor. I got you something. Did Great you? timing. Yeah, I did. You are so kind I know, about for, these gifts. For Women's I History Month. I still haven't gotten you anything. That's okay. Oh, Connor. That's really sweet. Thanks. In honor of Women's History Month, I, I got Brooke a pink cake pop. You know what? I was going to get you something at the flea market this weekend. But I forget what it was, and I talked myself out of it. Thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> but because I was like, no, he won't like this. I get, I'm weird about gifts. Like, I, it's kind of like celebrities where it's like, I would rather have like the most life changing interaction with you or say absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like gifts. Like, I'd rather get you the best thing in the world or nothing. Well, I have s some great news for you. Mm. Um, I'm not Marie Kondo. I'm a hoarder. So I'll take anything. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could remember what it was. Yeah. Come back to me. Okay. Put a pin in it. Okay. The second thing that's going to make you feel old. Yeah. Is that if a bouncer is checking IDs for you to get in the bar. Yeah. I know what you're going to say. First of all, if he sees a 19, automatic in. I know. Automatic in. Isn't that crazy? If he sees a 2000, automatic in. 2001, automatic in. 2002, is 2002 automatic at this point? Y yeah. Yeah? It really? No. What's 2023 I I minus 2002? I, get, we, I mean, yeah, we don't have to do math uh, on the 2002 podcast. 2002 is, uh, is, is what they would really kind of be looking at, you know, in terms of those dates. But 2001 and below, automatic in. That's disgusting. How scary is yeah, that? It's scary. Well, guess what? There's nothing we can do with the passage of time. Death, taxes, and the pursuit of happiness, or whatever they say. But um, This is delicious. It's so good. Yeah, it is so good. It's a girl for Women's History it, We were just talking about this. This is wet. And they keep it out. Well, it's also covered in like a protective coating of like crossing or whatever that is. We so were talking being, about how Cliff how Bars are wet, which is why I like them, but I don't like... What were you eating? A Belvita. Too dry. This is a perfect example of something that's soaked, and I love it. Yeah, it is. It's mo moist. Moist. Yeah. What's the word you Hopefully. don't like? Discharge. Discharge. You know what's crazy? Mm. One touch is literally all it <laughs> takes. <laughs> that's a good point. One touch is all it takes. <coughs> hold that thought <laughs> oh I know what I was gonna say so this morning so I, I stopped at Starbucks yeah. this morning and they added tipping at Starbucks did you see I don't know how often you go to Starbucks oh there goes the cake pop oh. hey you're gonna wanna find that this is a deep Bought chair it. Um, they started they added tips at Starbucks they've always had that no they haven't I promise and I've always felt weird cause I would tip a really mean barista at a fancy coffee shop that I hate cause I'm scared of them but the Starbucks people, in my experience, every Starbucks employee has been, they're like rental car people that work at rental car places. So nice. Mm -hmm. And stoked to be there. And I'm always like, oh, like I can't tip. So I want to know, like, when I'm tipping, am I tipping StarbucksLLC.org? Or am I tipping, you know, like when you go to... 100%. You know, like when you go to CVS and they say, are you a member? And you say, I don't know. And they go, well, what's your phone number? And they go... Mm -hmm. Here's my phone number. We don't have that in our system. What's your email? I don't need to be doing it. Here's my email. We don't have that in our system. Do you have a backup email? I do. Here's my back. Everyone's behind you in line. Mm -hmm. You say 37 cents. Do you want to donate a dollar to St. Jude's? Right. No, give me my 37 cents. Right. Because this dollar that you donate to St. Jude's, there's something evil afoot about that dollar, and I don't remember what it is. But I think that now CVS is able to write that off as a charity donation from them. Some, right? Okay. like Something like that. So you're actually like, again. You're actually benefiting the corporation. The corporation instead, and like St. Jude. But Jude's, also St. Jude. Like by some trickle down economic situation, mm -hmm. but not you're not like going to the it, hospital and giving right. it to a kid. Which right, I might be better to just donate directly rather than via via the. That CBS wouldn't really help the kid either iPad. if you just gave them a dollar as well in the hospital. Right, but they they would use it for. Candy yeah, I guess whatever. 
But no, so at Starbucks, I'm curious now, like, do they get to keep that money? Because I'd rather give them cash, but like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, there's no, I guess there's a tip. They've jar always had tip jars. Yeah. So you could. But use I don't have cash. That option. I I bet if you tip via, is it the thing where they kind of like turn it back to you? Is it it's that just situation? sitting there. So if I, if you pay with Apple Pay or something, before you pay, you tap dollar, two dollar, three dollars, which lost art form. Put a dollar amount, one dollar, two dollar, three dollar. I don't Instead want a, of a percentage. percentage. I agree with you. I was somewhere the other day. I know this is like a big running joke that we do now where it's like, oh, like they flip the iPad around like you start at 75%. I was at one the other day where it started at 25%. I've been seeing that too. You know what really bothers me? And then they look at you while you're like, custom tip. Right. You were nice, but right. I got to right. pay rent. Right. You know what really bothers me is when you order something on Postmates and it's like a more expensive meal, but it's like the same, like, okay, you order Chipotle and you order sugar fish. Oh. The driver is doing the same yeah. amount of work, but it's going to ask you to like tip a lot more on your Based sugar on fish percentage. because it's a more expensive meal. Yeah. That shouldn't be the case. That's an interesting That point. shouldn't be the case. It should be, we should be tipping based off of how far the Uber driver is driving or how heavy the meal is or the condition the road conditions not the price of the meal does mm -hmm. that make sense yeah that's something i've been feeling passionate about recently good for and you and to go back to your original question of who's getting the starbucks tips i'm i feel confident that they all split them at the end of the day i need to ask leave it let us know in the comments i bet we have people that totally are part of the starbucks yeah. family i'm betting that I, i'm hoping that they all get to i'm a big starbucks you know that i'm like Sorry, mom and pop stores. Mm -hmm. I love Starbucks coffee. I'm convinced that there's something in it. Doesn't make me need to shit my pants, and it also just like kind of sends a rocket to my brain. I only really like. I feel smarter when I drink Starbucks coffee, black. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I only really like my specific Nespresso pods with my very specific creamer. In co just add coffee in general. Yeah, and then like getting at any coffee shop because I just like never know what I'm getting really. Yeah. Like every time I get up to a the register at a coffee shop, I never I never know what to say. Completely blank. I just like order a coffee. Yeah. Like, no, but like that it? I don't I don't know, Connor. I don't I know. know. You know? Because it's never gonna taste like my Nespresso pod with the hazelnut creamer. I'd like to revisit the fact that they named all of the sizing the way they did. Grande no. Grande Venti Tall. Totally. They were in Italy and they only got like two lessons into their Duolingo. Totally. I said, that's tall. Well, it's not. What does Venti even mean? Translated. Extra large? Wouldn't know. Here, let's ask Siri. What does Venti mean? Because Grande must be large. Oh, yeah. Good point. 20. Okay. Oh, is see, it that's making sense. So why does it say tall? What does tall mean? I think I know. What? A sp a specific... Large in height, large in stature, but it's not. And maybe they've they're kind of riddle masters maybe it over was there. Opposite day. Let's briefly address tall. This designation by the co coffee company is considered many to be a classic instance of corporate language manipulation. Ooh, deep dive. Mm -hmm. Tall rhymes with small, but means something close to the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. The result arguably encourages a consumer to think a little less about the size of her beverage as well as the size of the bill. Did they say her beverage? They did. I love that. Yeah, it's Women's History Month after all. Hell yes. Interestingly, the tall was not always the smallest drink size and customers are requested. Oh yeah, that's true because there's a short. There's a shot, like a, no, an espresso shot. I, I sometimes, if I just need I a little- I have a short today. That's, oh, if you go to Starbucks, yeah. like if you get like a Cortado- which is a drink that I... Were you just talking about that recently? Uh, so about six months ago. Okay. But, like, Cortado is just those really small coffees that I like. Grande is Italian for large. Venti means 20 right. and Trenta means 30. Okay. So why isn't the 16 ounce called Sedici? Italian word for 16 instead. Right, why? All questions being raised by dictionary.com, by the way, doing God's work. I think this is some one in, of those Some things. intern had a bunch of free time at the end of the semester. It's seeming to me that we don't have the answers. They for, actually answered they answered all of it. Oh, I thought they were... Oh, can you run it back then about the tall? Why is that called tall? Tall is, an, is a classic act of corporate manipulation. Kind of like how uh, 
Is that confirmed that they were trying to manipulate us corporately? Totally. They've come out and said it. Diction- Dictionary.com. It's you believe that for Starbucks. 100%. Starbucks That's why corporate. it's called tall. Yeah, I don't have any reason to kind of like second guess dictionary.com. I have nothing against dictionary.com or its subsidiary. Okay. Okay. Then what, what reason would we have? The dictionary is a dictionary. It's it's kind of fat. There has to, I'm feeling like there must be another reason that it's called tall. Tall rhymes with small. It and small makes you think, oh, little tiny bill. For whatever reason, it's just like not adding up to me. Okay. But that's fine. You sh- you're just... It's not something I care enough about to like lift my phone up. Yeah. And and look, you know? Well, let's move direct, just like straight forward. Straight forward. Because you know what they say? The rest is still unwritten. One touch is literally all it, all it takes. takes. I agree. I do I agree. I've always said that. Uh, how's the weekend? Um, Or how was like since last week? Since last week... Um, that's a good question, Connor. My friends from home came to visit me this weekend. These are like my best friends since kindergarten. Yeah. Which is really sweet to see like your friends that were such a big part of your life in one stage come together with like the other people that are a big part of your life in the current stage and kind of see them meet. It's like very powerful. I really loved watching you get to meet them. Yeah. I was killing it. Yeah, you really were. You made an impression. Yeah. For sure. For sure. That's for sure. Um, so that was really sweet. What did we do? It was hard because they are living in Chicago, which is kind of like cold in the winter and such. And they came here the one weekend that it was kind of hailing and limited. snow was spotted on the Hollywood sign. So that sucked. So we were kind of limited. But here are some of the things we did. Go Watch on. A movie. Oh, movie. Yeah. We watched Twilight. Mm-hmm. We watched Superbad. We watched, I think that might be all the movies we watched in home. In theaters, we watched 80 for Brady. How was that? Connor. It was good? Incredible. I got some beef with Tom Brady this morning. I love Tom Brady. Love Tom Brady. Because of that movie. Wait, I just decided I don't have beef with him anymore. I squash it. What was the beef? Stand up, his stand up venture? He's doing stand up now. Okay, co-worker king. For you, he's a peer among among myself yeah. in the space. No, I. It's just one of those things that where I'm just like tired of celebrities doing so much. Right. The way that I would retire if I did one thing well. I was just gonna say, if I have the money, you you won't be seeing me ever again. I don't need to have six projects. I don't want one. I need one good one, and then and then I'm good. Mm-mm. I'll go in and check in. I don't need. I don't need. Um, a underwear line, a food line, a snack line, a production company, a music label, and a family. Well, he scratched that one off the list. So he can focus on his stand-up now. Damn, Connor. Ugh. He's definitely listening to our podcast. So, yeah. um, No, I just like don't... Chat, let's relax for a little bit. You've just retired I, from hey. like 400 years of football. Just sit on the couch. I'm totally with Flip you. Flip on the TV. I'm moving to an island. I think if that I'm, happens to me. I think I would get like if I was his level of fame, a little tiny bit of facial reconstruction, uh-huh. and then just live a normal life with my nest egg. Oh, that's an interesting point. Like go live in the Palisades. Uh huh. What's a nest egg? Just like what you have, it's all like, the money you have. Like a, an egg would be in a nest. Yeah, just the money you're sitting on. Is that exactly? I guess it? so. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I've never really said that. No, that I've makes sense. It, I don't think. But he's got so much going on and. Maybe he needs therapy. Sure. I'm sure he's in it. I don't think so. I think that's why he's starting stand up. Guys will do literally the really? li- guys will literally announce they're doing a stand up tour instead of I could see stand up being something that his therapist the way, encouraged him to pursue. Myself. What? I could see stand up being something his therapist encouraged him to pursue. He's gonna get ripped to shreds because he's been paying people to laugh at his jokes for 30 years. Yeah, but he's going to get so much attention. That's true. Which is, I think... I think... I, and I hate to talk about Tom's motivations without knowing him. Yeah. But I think that could be what he's kind of looking for at this could time. Be. It could be. At this time. Oh, you know what? Hmm. He's gotten a lot of airtime on this podcast. Tom B? Tom B. Yeah. Enough. He's gotten enough. Yeah. That's for sure. Bless his heart. Yeah. Anyway, I'm a big fan. I have a um, my 80 for Brady jersey in my... In my car. In my... Oh, my gosh. Okay, you should have worn it. I should have. 
next week. I need to see Cocaine Bear. I heard it was oh, really bad. I, really? That yeah. doesn't surprise me. Um, it's not really about the quality of the movie because it is at the end of the day called Cocaine Bear. Right. So I'm not. I wasn't going into it ex- expecting Titanic. You know. Right. Which is also in theaters. I really should have watched that when it was raining all weekend. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. No, you're good. I've been chalking up a storm over here. I'm telling you, this coffee, this Starbucks coffee. Yeah, I'm jealous. Um, here, dig in if you want to. Really? It's just right here. Yeah. It's okay. I've got my cortada. Okay. That I made, cool. Homemade. Um, I like that you added the A at the end because emphasis on Women's History Month because it is a cortado. Oh. Yeah. No, mine's femme. Cool. You actually gendered your small coffee. Yeah. Which is okay because it's because it's Women's women, History Month. Women's History. Um. Well. Cocaine bear seems like something you take your binky to. Or a bu- or a bag of cocaine. Oh. I'd go for binky and not. Yeah. In that I probably shouldn't be talking about it it's narcotics on but the podcast. When you're talking about cocaine bear, I think it's fine. Within the realm, by the way, cocaine bear is a woman. You're fucking no? lying. Now do you want to see it for women's history months? Because guys, guess what? Women's stories matter. Cocaine Bear's a girl? Yeah. No, Cocaine Bear's a woman. How do you know? It said it in the film? Yeah. And I also did my... Is the bear that it's based off of a woman? Yeah. See, to me, all bears are men. I know. And that's like your misogyny is showing. You know what? I just found out there are girl... Oh, there was another animal I thought was all men. Was I telling you this? Um, It's hard to say. Come back to me. Okay. Damn. I have one piece of advice while you sit over there. Thank you. Please. I can't remember who said it, but um, one touch is just all it takes. Oh, 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 I forgot. So um, so I was home alone for the past week. How was in that? My That's big, scary, scary in, your new, in your new home. Yeah, so I was... The house that I'm living in is definitely like needs to be lived in with three people. Mm-hmm. It's... Totally. It's like a large house, and it reminds me of the movie Parasite, which I now I wish I never would have seen. By the way, I've never seen that movie, and I never can because you told me the whole plot. Should have seen it. Should have seen it before. I told I be- you I didn't see it, and you said, oh my God, great movie. Let me tell you every single thing that happens in it, including the ending. Well, I never watch anything before anybody else, so sometimes I have to kind of clean I know. I was really late to that. Yeah. Well, my biggest pet peeve is when I'm telling someone the entire plot of a movie, and they're like, I was just about to watch that. Okay, it's been out for... 14 months so right there has lie. to be a time period of it's your fault there's a uh, yeah there's a there's statute a, uh, of limitations sta- it's like one freaking mind it's like one freaking touch is all it takes <laughs> but you could say that again. <laughs> and i will <laughs> and that. i know um so i was home alone right and like obviously pretty scared the first night i tried to figure out the alarm system made the alarm go off um that was actually that was like during the first day because even during the day I just moved in a month ago, right. so like I don't know the ins and outs of this house, um, and and so like the first day I just tried to figure out the alarm. One of my room, <clears throat> one of my roommates was in Canada, so like I don't know the time zones up there and how they change. So I didn't want to text him if it was like four in the morning right. at noon or something. And and then Hank was in Miami, being in Miami, mm-hmm. which my understanding is that Miami is pretty lit, right? Um, so. I just try to figure it out all on mm-hmm. my own. And that was really scary for me. I locked the doors, whatever. Um, and then I I was trying to make friends with that squirrel that I was talking about a yeah. couple months ago. So I went out. This is my first night there. I went out and I get throw him some walnuts. He eats it. We chat. Are squirrels technically rodents? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. That makes sense because I've been, when I look them in the eyes, I see Frankie. It's like the rat. same. Yeah. No, rodent is different than rat. There's a rat umbrella, and I think everything. It's a ro- there's a rodent umbrella. What do you rat think? Rodent. Is, rat you, is a rodent. What do you think when you think rodent? Rat. Sure, rat is one of the species of rodent. I think long, long tail. Rats are so cute. It's the tail is tough. The tail is a full separate entity to the t- me. The tail, a hundred percent. It looks like the um, Alaskan bullworm. You know, it's an appendage, which that's a word I don't like. Right. I need to rat start... with no tails. Guinea that's pig. a guinea pig. Yeah. And that's my daughter. So I'm in this house by myself, and I like have I'm feeding this squirrel, mm-hmm. and I I named him Mister Mister Man. Yeah. 
Because it's just like what came for out. Women's History Month. Oh, I didn't even check to see what he what's going on under the hood. I don't think you need to. No, I do. Because <laughs> I'm calling him Mr. Man, and I would hate to misgender right. Mr. Man. So I'm out there, and I'm feeding him, and I said, eh, I got my time in. Right. I'll come back tomorrow. Locked out. Of That's your house. Out of my house. Yeah. So okay, no big deal. I'll call my roommates. No one answers, because mm-hmm. it's probably four in the morning in Canada or something. And then, so I call a locksmith. Scariest person I've ever met. I've ever met. Andre. Who was able to get me back in my house for three Now, how does he get you in exactly? He busted the he door busts. frame off of... He busts all... Lo- yeah. It's a busting and not so much a universal key? It was a busting motion. I'll show you. I filmed it because I was like, oh, I could have done yeah, this. Yeah, I'm really You're breaking curious. into my house. But did like, he break the door? Uh, like, in a sense, yeah. Because when he told me, he's like, someone's already done this. But it was in an accent uh-huh. that I could not place. And I was like, okay, thank you for letting me know. Now I'm feeling really unsafe. I'm feeling like locksmiths could be the world's most dangerous predator. Yeah. And this is a man who they has now explored home. every entrance to my house. Uh-huh. But he's a locksmith at the end of the day, so I don't even have to I don't have to show him around. He can figure out where he can get in. There must be a case of he was, locksmith. He was small, killer. but he was dense. But I totally know the type. Yeah. Small, dense, but I could see him being flexible. Triple whammy. Andre, and he was wearing, this is going to be hard to explain to you because it's not going to make sense, but okay. to anyone that went to school anywhere down south, he was dressed as if he was in a fraternity, like like rushing. So he had like starch jeans on, cowboy boots, um, a t-shirt, but a vest. Like I can tell he had a cowboy hat in his car, but he was some Russian or some, some axe. Anyways, he gets me in, I'm in my house, I go to bed. I've I've uh, pushed my dresser up against my door so no one could get in my door. Because I have one of those doors that has like, glass on the inside so you can see. It's like frosted glass. You just have to punch it with your hand and yeah. you can come into my room. Anyways. Surely you're familiar with the 2019 feature film The Locksmith. Oh. An is- aging police chief and a New York City detective hunt down a serial killer in the Deep South. He's a locksmith. Don't give anyone any ideas. I would hate to romanticize the idea of being becoming a locksmith for oh my god connor there are wait i need to see if this serial killer was a was a locksmith he, uh born as the seventh last child of his parents first trained as a locksmith then as a watchmaker serial murders serial murderist yeah um i could really see andre stepping up i'm to surprised the plate. there aren't more well let's not let's not give anyone any <laughs> ideas here like, totally um, there's definitely room in the market for someone to kind of step into the mm-hmm. spotlight, but I, I'm sitting there in my room and I'm like feeling like, okay, you know what? Night one done. Fall asleep. I was actually feeling very cozy cause I washed my sheets again yeah. with diva wash. Can I just say I have been so inspired to do laundry now that I have diva wash. I said that when I got it, I go, I, I, all, I wash pretty consistently, but like I, I'm excited when that smell goes away. It's kind of like ding, ding, ding time to wash again. Mm-hmm. Um, Can I just say I'm not a consistent washer. And now you're. And now I'm upping the consistency. Well, ever it seemed like that took off really well. Someone, someone commented when we posted that video. No, let me finish the story. No, <laughs> no. So okay, um, I'm in my house. It's like three in the morning, and I sit straight up. Last time I sat straight up in my bed at three in the morning, my neighbor had offed himself. So I'm th- via gunshot. Uh-huh. So I was like, okay. No, no way this is happening. Again. Right. I don't even have a neighbor. Right. I'm like, okay, I heard something. I heard glass shatter. We have the windows downstairs. I'm like, someone is, has broken in. And obviously, I'm still thinking about the time zone. I text both my roommates. Hey, do we have like an alarm system? Like, is the, will the alarm system go off? Someone busts a window. Right. What's the pro? Like, how, how, how intelligent is our like alarm system? It's certainly not Smart House from Disney Channel original movie. Incredible. It doesn't really know. It only knows when a door opens, shuts. But you break a window. I think it's kind of like, is this my... This is me. I do think there are, are alarm systems that recognize a shattering of a window. Well, they certainly didn't understand this shattering right, of a window. Right. I'm sitting up and then I'm like, oh, was it someone in the alley? Are they going through recycling? Right. They're, it was so loud. And then I was like, oh, did I imagine it? Huh. And then I'm like, I don't know. But then I started thinking, I'm naked from the waist down. Uh-huh. I'm on the second floor. Should I jump out the window onto the you ground? You're the pooing? I was hoodie? Hoodie on, naked. Such an By interesting the way, choice. Try that hybrid. Try that hybrid. 
I I've, go to sleep. I've tried it. It's fine. It's not my favorite of the combinations. Well, it's, I think it's mine. Yeah. But except in the moment when you're like fight or flight, uh, am I going to be running down the street in my hoodie? Right. Winnie the Poohing. I can't even imagine if you had had to flee the scene well, in your I'm Winnie thinking, the Pooh. You know, hoodie I'm thinking, you know, I'm, collab. Al- I'm always thinking. Yeah. So, anyways, the sun starts <laughs> to come up. I the sun starts to come up, and uh, I'm like, okay, now I'm kind of safe because if someone's downstairs, like they probably maybe stole the air fryer or something. It's a nice one. But then I'm like, okay, cool. I haven't heard them, and I can hear when anyone wakes up in my house because it like echoes. Right. So I'm like, if they come up the stairs or something and want to kill me, like I would have heard them by now. Is it true that most burglars are nonviolent, or did I make that up? Never heard that stat. Okay, keep going. Most bur- so are they interviewing? They're I'm doing, feeling like they're, they're doing just... an exit survey after the burglar leaves. <laughs> were you feeling violent when you were breaking and entering, or were you kind of? No, chill? I think it's probably like if they're faced with either the police or you, they'll run away instead of. I again, I don't know. I don't think they take a burglar census on an annual basis. No, I'm not thinking most they're burglars asking... are not violent. Yeah, <laughs> I guess they're they not are. asking the burglar. It's they're recording. Okay, did the burglar? Say punch you in the face or flee the scene. Right, and also I'm, I would show them around the house, make sure that they got everything they need. Right. I'm cool with it. So two days go by, I'm feeling pretty safe in the house. Mm-hmm. I got my, I figured it out. Um, and then I go upstairs, which is where like Hank lives, and there's a storage closet up there that I put like winter clothes and stuff because they won't fit in my room. And I I go to hang it up and I turn, and I go to walk back downstairs. There's like an eight foot mirror that had fallen off the wall in his room and hit the ground and shattered into a million pieces. And that's the sound I heard. That must have been like an insane bang. It was one of the thing. It was one of those ones that's like stuck to the, it wasn't yeah. hanging. It wasn't, it wasn't like hanging like this picture. I right? can't believe you stayed at the house based off of I have, I, how loud that bang I was. I myself into thinking yeah. I imagined it. Yeah. Do you know how at the beginning of the episode I was like, Oh, I have to go to the bathroom, but like I can wait yeah. to the end. I can't actually. Oh damn! That. I should have told that story while you were kind of letting letting Shoot. rip. Do you have another sort like long form? Yeah, I could think of one. Well, I kind of want to be here for it. <sighs> Pee your pants. I'd rather not. I was behind this guy at CVS when I was checking out, yeah. and they were asking me if I wanted to donate St. Jude's, and he was buying such an insane amount of adult diapers. Yeah. And having a conversation like there was no, it was such a king move because you. He wasn't that old, but he was like, maybe they weren't for him, but he was like, not ashamed of his adult diaper No, you way. shouldn't be. No, and I was like, this is it. This is the I future. I could see myself buying some of those in the next, in the impending months or so. Yeah, I uh, think that that would have been a good thing for me to have had I been being broken and entered into. Oh, you could, so kind, I could of kind of throw it on. But I have a bathroom in my room, right. so never mind. Forget that. Okay, but if so- I wanted to be very silent, I'm going to head go out for pee, a second. Go pee, go pee. And then, but don't tell your story. Because I want to hear that. I don't know how I could not, unless we just didn't film for a little bit. Oh, what is that? What am I? What is this? What am I like? Next time you get locked out, just. Oh, oh my God. I was like, what am I looking at? Okay, so when the guy came over to let me back in my house, he had something like this how what do you do you have this on your person yeah i keep it with me oh see i'm alarmed <laughs> well i've had friends call me to have them to have me let them in actually oh my god dude i need to just text you next time guess how much he charged me first of all i'm gonna try to do his accent and i don't feel like it's bad because i can't place it anyway so it's not like i'm doing an accent and he was white but he was like Okay, this is a sh- so it's going to be either forty dollars or three hundred and fifty dollars. And I was like, "Hi, Andre, how'd you get that range?" Based on my. Sh- also, are you talking about my lock? Because how did he know the brand of sh- that I had? It says it on it, much like brands usually do. Um, so I was like, "Okay, let me know." It obviously ended up being three hundred dollars. I hadn't a choice. Because all I was thinking was like, if I have to get a hotel room tonight, it's going to be 200 bucks. 
I need to go today. This is like a really great call out. I need to just go make a copy of my key and, hi and hide one somewhere in my yard. Bury it even. Oh, or in my car. <laughs> I don't have to bury it in my yard. Oh, yeah. They also make like that. fake rocks or there's a hide a key. It's like a magnetic box that you can put under your car that you can hide a key in. Wow, they're getting really creative. Um, yeah, but my roommates are always like, is anyone around? Can they let me in? And no one's ever around. So I usually just sit in the front yard. I've made a little area. But I get locked out constantly because the mirrors will fall. And then you'll think that, I don't want to hit the camera. Okay, there we go. Um, oh, we just kind of all chatted together as one. I need what to kind of talk about still the still my lock and key situation. Oh, um, since last week, Brooke, yeah, I've had the most hectic, like crazy week, and I have nothing to show for it personally. Oh, yeah. How was your stand up set? Speaking of nothing to show for it, I, I killed it and it was awesome and it was supposed to be recorded, but obviously the camera died as I walked onto the stage, is what they let me know. But it was great. Like wow. I literally, I did like half of this, the same set that I have been doing. Yeah. And then I, I wrote a second half. That's awesome. Yeah. It was like the longest one I've done. And it was really good. I think I got great feedback, met a bunch of people and it was really fun. I love that, Connor. Thanks so much. But I have, besides that, like I've had every single day has been something, but I have genuinely, it's like performative busyness. Uh -huh. Who am I doing it for? Right. I think that it's like, that would be a good therapy unpacking session. Totally. Because I feel like from off, from having worked in an office where like everyone's calendar was always booked. Right. I like always tried to be busy, but I was never doing shit. I think an important thing to remember is that productivity doesn't have to do with a product. You can be productive and not have something produced from that moment of pro productivity. It's so funny because I have stuff I need to and do. And I, I just, that came out of my ass. I think it made sense to me. Yeah, it made sense Say to me too. Say it one more time. Can you remember? Okay, it? so yeah, totally. So being productive has nothing to do with a product. You can be productive and not produce. You were so close to yeah. having an act okay. like ground. No, check this statement. out. Okay, check this out. Productivity does not equal. Does not equal. Look at me. I'm doing that sign. Equal sign slash it out. Does right, not equal I don't, a product. I, don't, I, don't think I no. I think that you're. I think that you're projecting a, an actual saying that's really good. And I think that it's that's a real really saying. Good as well. Yeah. Product. Activity. Activity does not does equal. Not. Product. Look that up. Define your worth. No, we don't give a shit about our worth. We're talking about products. Uh, Do you understand what I'm saying? Like. For example, me closing my eyes and just thinking about stuff and comedy and, you know, whatnot. Oh, you know, that's productive to me at this moment, maybe. You know, But I'm not producing a product. You know what I was thinking was busyness does not equal productivity. And you then productivity does ways. not equal a final product is what, yeah. Right. You could, or you could like produce a product of some sorts and that might not be productive. Damn. Come on. Productivity is not about do. There's, I guess, a yeah. lot of sayings. But it, productivity I, is not about doing more work. Productivity is not about doing more. It's about creating more impact with less work. Oh, that would be. No, mine, mine, thing like. ma mine makes more. Mine is better. Okay. Just because it, it like makes more sense and applies to what we're talking about. My more. whole thing with this. My whole thing with this yeah. is. It's just like one touch is, is all, quite frankly all, all that it takes. And and that's that. That's we could have left it there. We could have. We've got actual stuff that we need to hit on because we we sit here every day. So it's Christmas morning for me when I go to bed. Sometimes I go through the podcast in my head and I'm like giddy and I'm mm -hmm. so excited to do all this stuff. And then we sit and we brainstorm and we come up with a lot of topics and then we get here and we sit here and then we'll be 40 minutes in and we'll say we didn't we didn't touch our docket of 100%. Of, so I'm curious. F f we get a lot of feedback, which I usually don't look at uh -huh. or acknowledge. And I do. And you do. I do look. I love looking at feedback more so. Less love, more so compulsion. But yeah. I do look at it. Um, But I'm curious if people like, I've, I get some words that some people like are like, nuanced anecdotes more than current and, event. and personal and then some people like yeah the personal event stuff i personally like personal anecdotes more what do you like more 
I think we can have personal anecdotes on current events. Yeah, that's a good point. Such as, and furthermore as well, such as the woman who's involved with stealing Lady Gaga's dogs at gunpoint from her dog walker Mm -hmm. is now suing Lady Gaga for not providing her with the reward that Lady Gaga was offering publicly, the half a million... Half a million dollars. Okay. I, it makes it begs a question. Hmm. Can I ask some follow ups? Yeah. The woman that is suing Lady Gaga is the one that stole the dogs. She's involved in some capacity. Like a conspirator. Like she was of involved sorts? in some capacity. Yeah. The type of thing because you know what they say: one touch is literally right. all it takes to exactly. be involved in some capacity. So, and she's wanting the money despite the fact that she was involved in some capacity. That's right. And but Lady Gaga had said. I'll give the money to who returns the dog. Yeah, sure, but like there, that is sh- literally a pro- like the new age problem for a philosophy class. Right, on that, ethics. this is an ethics. Problem. It's an ethics problem. So it says, and, and uh, we talked about it yesterday. I don't know how legally binding like a lost dog reward sign is that's on a telephone pole, but as Lady Gaga, I you know what? I don't know what I would do actually. And that's why it's an ethics question because yeah. you have to think about it. Two days after the 2021 stick-up, McBride, the woman involved via One Touch, said returned to Lady Gaga's dogs, returned her dogs, with police noting that McBride seemed to be uninvolved and unassociated. Uh huh. But soon after, McBride was charged with receiving stolen property and accessory to attempted murder. Okay. Okay. Attempted murder Drama. of the dogs? No, of the man or woman holding the dogs. I can't remember who it was. Wait, she was going to murder the person holding they, the dogs? They have a gun. The woman that returned the dog was going to murder the people that stole the dog. We don't know her intentions. She did have a gun. McBride is also seeking no less than $1.5 million in damages, including compensation for legal fees, mental anguish, and pain and suffering. This is the person who tried to steal the dog. A- allegedly. A deputy attorney in Los Angeles noted that any payout from a lawsuit would be restitution for Lady Gaga and other victims of the robbery. It was clear from the evidence presented to the grand jury that Miss McBride knew the dogs had been stolen in a violent robbery in which... I don't know. Someone had been Ryan Fisher, which is the dog walker, had been previously injured. It is also clear for the evidence that McBride had known at least two of her co-conspirators for years. Oh, here's what I would do. <clears throat> Spill. I would see the trial through. From what? Who are you? I'm Lady Gaga. Good okay. question. Good question, Connor. I'm always going to be Lady Gaga if given the opportunity. Good to know. Yeah. Just for future reference, I'll be the person that stole the dog. Okay, I'm seeing the trial through because I. I'm on the right side of history, anniversary, and the truth will prevail. That being said, don't uh, don't always trust. Don't knock it until our you si- try. Our system. Yep. So this would be a really good test of the system, yeah. and that's where I'll leave it. So that and I answered nothing except that you're Lady Gaga in right. the situation. But that's all that matters. I, yeah. If you look at the crux of the issue. Crux? Yeah. Wow, you've thrown in a couple curveball words really? today. Crux is a good one. Thanks. I'm going to add that to my list. Go ahead. Um, I'd need the money if I did return the dogs because there is a loophole in our system of lost flyers for dogs. You got your dogs back. Unless you had From asked, the person that stole them. If, you, <clears throat> if she would have... Okay, here's what I ask. If she would have kept the dogs, which was wrong... Mm-hmm. And holding someone at gunpoint is wrong, I would say. She didn't have to give the dogs back. She was not being held at gunpoint. Right, but she did give them back because she wanted the money. I want money as well. Right, but do you want the money enough to steal someone's dogs in a violent robbery? You know what they say? Most burglaries are not violent. <laughs> this one was, as is specified by... They didn't by use the vi- gun. They used the term violent robbery. Now we're we're cutting hairs. Not for, really. I don't know. I was just playing devil's advocate. I, I think that there's some stories. I think it was like a series of unfortunate events or something where they were stealing dogs and returning them for cash. And I thought that, that like as a child, I was like, oh. That did not happen in a series of unfortunate events. Okay. Movies. Something like a book like that. Like one of those kind of darker... Tim uh-huh. Robinson, not Tim Robinson, Tim. Lemony Snicket? Perhaps. That's, lim- yeah, Lemony Snicket. Lemony. Good name. Yeah. That's Ooh. not his real name. You know that, of course. Pen name. What's his real name? Unwritten. The rest is still unwritten. 
It's Natasha. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. okay, so at, in summary. In summary? Th- I don't think that she should be paid. And if I were Lady Gaga, I would go to I would go to court. Yeah. Well, yeah, you made that my clear. Ground. Okay, I have to play devil's advocate because that's just in my nature. But I do agree. I'd be really bummed if someone held me at gunpoint and took my dog. Yeah, that's a bummer. I would settle this outside of court and be like, you're a piece of shit. Here's 10 grand. And the lady that held a gunpoint to steal two French bulldogs would probably be stoked on the 10 grand. No, I'm too proud to give that woman money. Ooh, I'm not proud at all. Especially if I'm Lady Gaga. Right. I'm not, I'm not giving her one penny. And the thing is, even if the court was like, okay, you owe this bitch. Sorry, this woman. Whoa. <laughs> sorry. During her three month? Sorry. Well, okay. If she was like, oh, if the judge, if Judge Judy, say, was like, said, if Judge Judy, if the judge ordered me to pay this woman, I wouldn't. Does that make sense? Well, then you're going against a court of law. I'm, then I'm going against the court of law. And I'll see you in prison. Okay. I would go to prison rather than pay that woman. At this point. Meeting adjourned. That's all we need to say. Okay. Um, because it's history month, let's do all women s- stories. And this one is, I like didn't even want to do this one, but I just get mm-hmm. so fired up every time we talk about it. Selena Gomez, uh, uh, what's her face, and Selena, Haley. Selena, Kylie, and Haley. Okay. I... I'm out of the loop enough to where I need like a quick summary on it and then I have opinions. I keep watching that one really good TikTok that gives all of the information and then I keep forgetting immediately because it's so stupid. Like it's not able to stick in my brain. This It is so stupid. The whole thing feels like an uh, like a seventh grade thing where it's like, that's, you're uninvited. I'm going to invite everyone else to my birthday and accept you. That's what it feels like it on both sides. the most... Middle school situation with people who just, are can you run way what ha- too old and way too famous. Yeah, basically, I don't even like really know it that well, but Selena had posted a picture of her eyebrows post having them laminated and they just like looked weird or something. Should I do that? No, you would need eyebrows to have them laminated. Okay, keep going. Okay. And so she posted the picture of her getting her eyebrows laminated and then Haley and Kylie posted on, or I, it was Kylie or Haley posted on their story, like a picture of them FaceTiming, I think, like captioned eyebrows. And then there was like other stuff like that, that I'm forgetting. Just like clearly like they were making posts targeting Selena without adding her. Mm. And it probably had something to do with the Instagram race. The my space race, the space race to space race three hundred fifty mil yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I like can't even. I think that's how it started. Do you, do we have the TikTok that we have the easiest explanation that explains video it? Link. Okay, I'm pro- let's watch that because I don't remember how what happened there not after the eyebrows. I know that there's like this thing where they all keep using each other's songs for random stuff, and they both have makeup brands, and they're using like some people are using their. Selena Gomez's makeup brand, and then some people are using Kylie Jenner's oh, see, makeup brand. I'm not brand. even on that train. I'm on Twitter. This is where uh-huh. I'm seeing everything. I'm not on TikTok. Right. So I'm... My understanding is that. Okay, let's watch this. Okay. This is fake. There's their makeup. That's their makeup. Oh, this isn't the. Good episode. night. That's fine. I'm not about to keep barking at a bitch who ain't about to. Oh, that's good. <laughs> anyway. Just mad because you was a stripper that thought you was gonna get wife. Oh, dick. and Haley like, Bieber has makeup fine. too. Yeah, I'll be course. a stripper because I make. Okay. More so skincare. Here's my whole thing. I don't know who's beefing more, but I think that like if we're putting Jake Paul and Tommy Fury in the ring, put them in the ring. Put Haley Bieber and Selena Gomez in the ring. I promise you that's going to make more money than Jake Paul. Yeah, of course, but they're not going to get in the ring. They're in the ring. Digitally. They're in the emotional ring. That's the thing about women. We're much more emotional. Oh, you know what? No, I changed my mind. Don't put them in the ring. Put them on. They'll do this. They'll do this. Tell me. Selena Gomez, Haley Bieber, on the wipeout course where they have to jump across those balls over the mud tar pit. You know I got asked to be on wipeout? Did you actually? Swear. Hold that dot. Put a pin in it. Okay. We're working on not interrupting each other. That's one piece of feedback that we are taking to heart. That wasn't an interruption. That was a complete derailment. I'm saying the complete derailment's cool with me. I'm cool with derailments. Oh, I love it. I mean, 
No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Yeah, because as long as you can put a pin in it, what's the harm? And as long as, as long as we keep in mind that one touch is all it takes, then I think that we're all good. I agree. What I was saying, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, instead of putting them in the ring, you're going to put them in the, On the wipeout, wipeout course. Wall, which I was asked to. And then, yeah. That's, I guess I had nothing else to say because I don't remember. That's fine. I also don't really have anything else to say about the wipeout thing. You were asked to be on I it? don't know why I said no because that would be really fun. Were you asked to be on with anybody? Because I think you go on with a partner. Yeah. Let me see if I still have the DM from them. Wow. I want to go on wipeout. No, I don't know what I'd search. I think it wasn't my, like wipeout. My most delusional trait besides thinking. You could do it. Well, I was thinking new, yesterday that I, I could I need land the, the plane in the Hudson. Yeah, I feel the same way. I also feel like I could, uh, if if need be, take down Jaws? like a terrorist if I needed to. Oh. Like I like always, on the plane? Yeah. I, I hit fantasize about laptop. that, which is like, that's a bad thing mm-hmm. to do. I also feel like, if an, like you, you always say this too, if an animal was coming at me, I'd be like, hey, no need to eat me. Right. And I'd be like, friend. okay. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's called ego. And that's something that we need to get over. Well, it's like coming to terms with your own mortality is is at the crux of it, too. But we're both so cool with, like, giving up as well. So, like, I don't know where that... Right, but on some level, we just, like, might not be cool with death. You know, I'm thinking in terms of the bear attack. If a bear is attacking you, we're convinced that we could beat it. Let's I think that's because we're not willing to, to face the alternative yet. Hey, um, getting my I got my oil changed in my car yesterday. How was it? Did you go to Valvoline? First time in my freaking life, I said, no, just the oil change today. Thank you. Are you sure you don't want that? No, just the oil change today. Thank you. I said, your brakes are out. I said, just the oil change and check the brakes as well. Thank you. And then I walked out. I said, that's all I'm paying for. If you do anything else, I'll have you by the neck. That's amazing because the exact opposite thing happened to me. Yeah. Well, did you I, get your... Oh. I moved forward with getting everything on the menu. And they did not check my brakes despite the fact that I was... I You know, I'm in desperate need of brakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I did get an oil change and everything. And I'm getting a new car, which was on my to-do list of 2023. There are two things on my to-do list. Get a new car and go to the eye doctor. When did you get it? Did you get the new car in February or March? Today's March. It's not here yet. Well, did you order it in well, February Well, here's March? what happened. Uh, February. So that's only two months into the, new, the year. Yeah. That's good. I just like... For a goal. I believe in working on yourself so that you can do things that you might be afraid of doing. However, in in the case of negotiating for a vehicle, that's not something I'm ever, I don't want to do it. I'm never, it's just not in aligned with my personality. So I did ask pop up to do that for me. Oh, good. So pop up called the Toyota dealership and was able to strike up a deal with, with the Toyota man. And so I have have a new RAV coming to me soon. That's awesome. Bleed RAV. 100%. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. I've always said that. Yeah, live by the rav. Yeah, die by the rav. So hopefully this time next week, I'll have a new rav. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I gotta really get my car fixed and then sell it. Right. But here's the thing: I'm not getting mine fixed. Like I'm giving it to the dealership absolutely in shambles, and they'll just like kind of deduct the amount of money that they'll give back to me instead of me paying to get it done same same thing i've never gotten in a car wreck ever and the first one i got in was in the air one parking lot first time i ever i was like i'm gonna brave i'm gonna brave the crowds i'm gonna go to air one and be like an air one guy today mm-hmm. didn't go i Immediate like didn't car ever go back yeah car to pull you can't get out of the parking lot there's like six like giant g-wagon range rover people behind me i'm like they're probably all a-list celebs watching me do a 17 point turn off of this yellow pole and you know what i've always said Uh. crashing my car something i prefer to do in private 
no one else needs to, mm-hmm. it's not benefiting anyone mm-hmm. else to see it. Like if someone's parallel parking, I, out of respect, I'm not going to look, you know? Yeah. No one should be able to look at anybody else parallel parking. Like you should be fined. I'm, I'm, if it takes me more than the one turn to get out, I'm, I'm out of there. I'm getting a new, I'm two blocks over. I'm re- retrying. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know how I've been on a shark kick? Mm-hmm. I watched Jaws for the first time. Okay. Have you seen Jaws? Yeah. What'd you think? Um, I thought it was a good movie. Great movie, even. Uh-huh. For me, just like now that I know so much about sharks, I was having a hard time watching it because it's so unrealistic. The what aspect of Jaws? The fact that that shark, you know, when they're on the boat for like three hours of the movie and the shark is just like kind of circling around. I don't think that the shark would really do that. Like the shark is not like actively searching for humans and boats to just like pummel and eat. Right. Like she's that. You know what? She's going to swim away I'd or say and this, come I, back if she wants. But like that's not like sharks aren't like a predators like that. And I would say that most of the time bears don't do cocaine. But like, right. we can't dis- discredit the fact that maybe that maybe that shark. Got I just into like some didn't like blow. the shark presentation. Well, that was the whole thing with Jaws is that Jaws is like the first ever uh, like catalyst for like culling sharks and killing sharks and like demonizing sharks. That was like this huge thing that is still being reversed. I'm so anti demonizing sharks. I'm just pro putting them in a different ocean. Put them in a lake. But- Saltwater lake. Could they live in a lake? Brooke, I don't know. I don't know anything. They have gills. It's water and it's salt. It seems good to me. Mm-hmm. That's like saying, to think about. could you live in Egypt? There's air. So what? There's a- Right, but it might not be the best place for me. So I don't want the sharks I, to go in the lake it's not skin, the best place. You know? But like you're yeah. not going to die. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. Um, and I do... like. Uh, like want to touch on Andrew Garfield at the SAG Awards, but what else is there to say besides? Did you ever take philosophy class? No. I'd take. What do you mean in like high school or college? College. No. How do you take a class on philosophy? It's just like philosophy one hundred and one. But it's like, like are they you teach learning you about theories the philosophers? Or are you learning about the theories? You're learning about the theories and There's the new philosophers every day. Okay. You know what? No. What? You know what? Hang on. Wait. No, Whatever. No. How come, whatever happened to philosophers? Why do they just not exist now? How come I can't be Pythagorean? Connor, there are philosophers still. You can major in philosophy. Give me a fucking break. You can. My brother majored in philosophy. You now don't... he works at... J.P. Morgan? No. He doesn't work at J.P. Morgan. What does he work at? A, a, a business. A firm? No. Like fundraising and such. So if you're a, so philosophy he's a philosopher, major, he's a philosopher fundraising. Do you say thank you all for coming here tonight? <clears throat> There's a saying that I wrote myself earlier today. One touch is all it takes <laughs> when writing this check for us today. Okay. Try to spell philosophers in one go. No, don't look. Look at me. No, no. P H I L O S. I P H E R O P H E R. Contemporary philosophers are enormously influential right now. Jay Shetty. Is philosophy still a thing? That would be one, like a philosopher, it's right? It's just as relevant today as it was centuries ago. I think it's just influencers that have words to say. You're not. You don't have to. I'm a philosopher. We're philosophers. One hundred percent. Oh my god! I was philosophizing today when I said we aren't podcasters. We're philosophers. That's what I was saying about the productivity. That's philosophy. Oh That's my philosophy. God. That is the definition we, of philosophy. Look, we could sit and stare at a wall all day and that would be the most productive day for a philosopher like ourselves. That's why we're in this library. Oh my God. Because it's I stimulating have, to I the have, brain. Like I'm having an out of body nirvana experience right now realizing my calling today with this mic and my cell phone is that I was born to be a philosopher. You should put in your Instagram bio like where it's the occupation Public piece. figure slash comedian ex philosopher. philosopher. 
That is what we are. Wow. I feel God in this space. You today. know how there's like musical comedians? There's also philosophical comedians. I think you're thinking of a slam poetry sesh. Oh that my would God. Be... We should do that. Yeah. I still know One that a whole touch is all it takes. Okay, so I'm gonna circle back to why we started this conversation in the first place. Yeah. Andrew Garfield. In philosophy class, now I'm gonna completely butcher this. There's this theory. Um, can mm-hmm. it's Plato and it's like the theory of like the perfect form. Does that make sense? Let's see if that's it. Plato's theory of forms asserts that the physical realm is only a shadow or image of the true reality of the realm of form. Hold on. Hold that dot. Yep. I'm going to need a visual <laughs> for all those words. Okay. Okay. And there is one. Perfect. So, oh, that's not helping. It. There's a highest form, and everything is kind of built on that image. Or is that not it at all? Can we go back to the word definition? Let's take it. Let's take it sentence by sentence. Can I say it? Maybe you'll okay. You'll be better yeah. hearing it. Okay. Plato's theory of forms asserts that the physical realm—that's what we're in right yes, now. Yes, exactly. Is only a shadow. Yes. Or image of the true reality of the realm of forms. So, so th- we are a shadow of the true reality of the true form, the true reality of the r- the realm of forms. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay, that's heavy. So, what are these forms according to Plato? The forms are abstract, perfect. Those are two thing, two words that go mm-hmm. not hand in hand: abstract and perfect, unchanging concepts or ideals that transcend time and space. They exist in the realm of forms. That is. Um, like complete bullshit (laughs) no because here's how it's going to make sense to you andrew garfield is the perfect form and we are all shadows of him does that make sense this is what this we had the whole conversation because see that's literally all i can think about when i look at andrew i'm like we are made in your all men are made in your image. Um, this is what everyone is striving to be. This God, her, God made Andrew hands, her own hands. Okay. God made Andrew with her own hands as the perfect form. She didn't make anyone else with her own two hands. She handmade Andrew. I and have we are to, all we living- have to, we have to move on <laughs> past this. Like really? this level of delusion is, it's not is delusion. Cr- it's philosophy. Sorry. That's what I meant. This level of philosophy is just beyond the realm of forms. The realm. But do you of the, get it? No. R. E. Andrew Garfield. I you, I don't even get the main point of the whole theory. I feel but, like it, I don't really get the theory, but I get it when it's in terms of Andrew Garfield. So, to circle back, you think that God made Andrew, and then we are all just like with her own two hands, yes. Yeah, and then we would all just like fall under. So he, and there's the Andrew umbrella, and then we would all fall underneath it. Andrew's the perfect form. And we are the images slash so shadows. Is there any... Excuse me, more so men are the images slash shadows created in his image. Okay. Not in a religious way, in a, in a philosophical way. And I disagree. Put a pin in that. Can we pull up a video of Andrew from the SAG Awards? And then I want you to Please tell me you disagree. Please spare me. Then I want to... I watched we talk- it. Well, I want to watch it. We don't have to watch it all. No. Like, this is... I think that you would love to see this three-second clip of him saying he likes going deep and raw. Oh, yeah, I've seen this. But this isn't what I'm talking about. Unafraid of going deep and raw. He's not. Unafraid of going deep and raw. I can disagree. That's not even what I was talking about. I'm talking about his relationship with Sally Fields. Oh, it's sweet. I saw that, too. Yeah. I saw it on your story twice. Okay. So I think we're good. I get it. Well, I wanted to touch on it because it's important to me. I like the philosophy piece of that. But the cool thing about philosophers is that they were often at odds. Okay. And they had to be cool with being at odds or else there wouldn't be a podcast for them to talk about. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Um, They are sweet, though. And Sally, he kept checking in on Sally Fields. That was really cool. It was like just like the most perfect, exquisite night. And I was happy to be a part of it. I think that this is such a special year for people that work in PR. As opposed to any other year? Yeah. Why? 
Because there's some people that have just like Andrew Garfield has been like a famous person forever, but like I've not gotten so much An- Andrew Garfield oh. like, in front of my face as someone who doesn't seek him out. Like think think he's a cool dude, fan of him. Like wouldn't need to see the same clips that we it's saw. It's just today. that we're online more. No, he's all over my TL and like you're a fan of him because you followed all of his work. But like, right. I haven't, besides Spider Man, like I didn't see 30, 60, 90 or whatever. <laughs> what was it? Tick, tick, boom. Tick, tick, boom. Or uh, You've seen so many things with Andrew Garfield in it without realizing Spider-Man. probably. Spider um, Man. Give me something. Social else. Network. I actually didn't see that. Really? No. I don't, but I, I don't I know if there's anything else cool. that you would have seen actually. Yeah, that was his like first big movie. Fan? Not enamored. And I don't think I was made in his image because. Look at me. Well, <laughs> you're striving to be the perfect form. I no, but I'm also a realist. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. I can't be. I can't be the end. No you one need. can. Hey, no one can. So that's just that. And I think we just have to end on that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what else to say? We could talk. We could talk in circles of an AG. Yeah. Architectural guard. Honestly, guard like guest. I would love to do an AG podcast. Oh my god, I would love to do a podcast. I guess you wouldn't be interested of like doing a podcast. Each episode is a different crush and just really diving in. <laughs> Each episode is like a full kind of. You may have found a niche. That may be a yeah. good niche for you. Oh my God. I'm going to do that on my own. Do you and mind? No. Don't <laughs> at all. Actually, that'll be a really great um, like case study for a college class in yeah. s- psychiatrics. To- in psychiatrics? Yeah. Totally. What's. Okay, I'm I'm in. So I kind of bid you adieu now, and I'll see you in bonus. And I'll be seeing you in my next podcast called A to Z Crushes. No, no. <laughs> uh, through the Looking Glass. <laughs> through the Looking Glass. What's that? What celebrity that? edition. Well, no, what was that thing uh, on Freaky Friday? The Jamie Lee Curtis wrote a book, and it was called. I think through it's the called Looking Through Glass, the Looking Glass. Seance into. Into some. It was a word that I I never I can't get out of my head, but I, I obviously I can. I shook it. Shook it out of my memory. Well, let's pull that up for you. People texting me like in a, in my podcast, like I've just been really offended by people texting me. Recently. I wonder if I wish there was a way like to have a email, like a generic email, go out that's a text to be like I am recording an a podcast response. right now, an auto response. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let me type in through. They. Oh, there it is. Through the looking. Oh yeah. Through the looking glass. Oh, can we scroll down a smidge? Through the looking glass. It didn't say it. It doesn't have it. Tess Coleman's. Oh, yeah. What was the word? Seance. Seance in retro. In retrograde? Yeah. Gotta, hang on. Through the. I got to see it on my. Looking. It's right I, there. Freaky. Friday. Oh, well, I just want to see it on my phone so I know that I'm saying it right. Hang on. It's. No, it's not seance. What is it? It's it's a big, huge word. Give me that phone. Senescence in retrograde. Senescence. It's senescence. It's senescence, and we never figured out what. Hey, what does senescence mean? Add this to your word. To your word. I don't think I like this word. It doesn't. Senescence or biological aging is a gradual deterioration of functional char- characteristics in living organisms. So it's senescence in retrograde. So she's actually aging yeah. backwards. The, yeah. So she's like looking in, and that's funny because it's Freaky Friday, and she switched daughter, daughters with her body. Oh my God! There are so many oh, layers to that sp- film that I can't even begin. Speaking of Satan, they're actually coming out. Jamie Lee Curtis came out and said, "We're gonna do a second. Vi- we're do- gonna do a second movie about Freaky Friday." Recently, she didn't give any details. My biggest regret in this life is one time saying I didn't like Jamie Lee Curtis on this podcast because I have completely changed my attitude. I think she is a national treasure. Uh, yeah. Perfect form. No. (laughs) Okay. I do miss her in the Activia Activia commercials. That's when SNL was just that. that, Let's end it here. That lady can eat (laughs) some yogurt. And I with that, so regular during that time, which is a good thing to do. To have. Well, did you not see the SNL skit where like she shits her she's pants? She's shitting her pants nonstop. Okay. I don't need activity to do that. I know you don't. Hell no. Guys, this episode was brought to you by 
Can we legally say that? Let's see you guys. See you in Ponis if you want to come over and we just are going to be hanging out there. And then um, if you don't. Yep. And see playing us there. some we'll games. See you next and week. Yeah. Bye. This week on Close Friends. Out. Out. Immediate out. No one is sucking their mom's teeth. 2023 is the year to learn when to lie. I, I always lie. <laughs> Connor, why didn't you tweet that one? I don't one? know. Is one touch all it takes? Sign up on tmgstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.